Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Friday, the 26th day of July, year of our Lord, 2024. I do pray this finds you well tomorrow. The big day, big seven. I got my former year shirt. I think this is from last year. So uh, if you're running in that, pray for a safe run for you. If friends are traveling to be here, hopefully they're all here already. Pray for their safe travels when they're when they're concluded. But uh, I'll be out there tomorrow too. So uh, if you see me, say hi uh, and uh, enjoy yourself. Be careful. It should be, I think, a fairly pleasant morning, eight o'clock race time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. This evening, we return to the daily lectionary and we read from 1 Samuel once again tonight, chapter 10. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his people Israel? And you shall reign over the people of the Lord and you will save them from the hand of their surrounding enemies. And this shall be a sign for you that the Lord has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin and Zelza, and they will say to you, The donkeys that you went to seek are found, and now your father has ceased to care about the donkeys and is anxious about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on from there. Then you shall go on from there. Going up. Then you shall go on from there farther and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there. One carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you shall come to Gibeath Elohim, where there is a garrison of the Philistines. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them, prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and be turned into another man. Now when these, now when these signs meet you, do what your hand finds you to do, for God is with you. Then go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I am coming to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait until I come to you and show you what you shall do. When he turned his back to leave, Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all these signs came to pass that day. When they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. And when all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets, the people said to one another, What has come over the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And a man of the place answered, And who is, his fa and who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? When he had finished prophesying, he came to the high place. Saul's uncle said to him and to his servant, Where did you go? And he said, to see the donkeys. And when we, when we saw that we were not to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Please tell me what Samuel said to you. And Saul said to his uncle, He told us plainly that the donkeys had been found. But about the matter of the kingdom of which Samuel had spoken, he did not tell him anything. Now Saul called the people together. Now, excuse me. Now Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah. And he said to the people of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians, from the hand of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But today you rejected your God, who saves you from your calamities and your distresses, and you have said to him, Set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. He brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its clans, and the clan of the 
Matrites was taken by Lot, and the Saul, and Saul the son of Kish was taken by Lot. But when they sought him, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, Is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, Behold, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Then they ran and took him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see him who the Lord has chosen? There was none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted, Long live the king. Then Samuel told the people the righteous duties of the kingship, and he wrote them in a book and laid it before the Lord. Then Samuel sent all the people away, each one to his own home. Saul also went to his home in Kibia, and with him went men of valor whose hearts God had touched. But some worthless fellows said, How can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no present. But he held his peace, and that is the word of the Lord. Now, remember, and it comes up in this task, in this ta text, which I apologize, I didn't read it very well, I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, um, it comes up in the text that you, God is disappointed with them that they asked for a king. Now he's going to grant that request, and he is ultimately going to use the kingship for their benefit. And then we'll talk about that in a moment. But this is just a, it's, it's all fascinating to me. The pastor, I studied the word. Hopefully it's fascinating to you too, but just, you know, there's just so much going on in these texts uh, theologically, and some things we just, you know, because of our, our distance and time and place, um, it's hard to unpack some of these things. So we see here that Samuel, the prophet, this is some reading, I'm getting Samuel and Saul confused, hopefully I said them right. So Samuel, who's the prophet, takes a flask of oil and, and pours it on his head. He anoints him. And this is the first time somebody who's not a priest is anointed. The interesting thing about you know David, you know this is a Benjamite. We see that as the text unfolds. He's not a Levite. He's not a priestly clan. So David, you know, who is coming as well. Uh, um, one of the things we're going to learn about our Messiah, which also means the you know the word Messiah, Christ, uh, means the anointed one. And he's anointed by Father with the whole, by the Father with the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God. But uh, he is not from the priestly line either. We see here too that Saul, or Saul, I'm make sure I'm saying the names correctly. As this unfolds, he's given these signs to know. And this, remember, this is happening very quickly, just a couple of days after uh, uh, Samuel, you know, goes and and, and finds him, and then a, a just not even a week will pass, and he'll be uh, by Lot. The lot will fall to him to be king. You, know, you got to think, you know, for for Saul's sake, and Saul's going to make his mistakes. But you know, you have the word of God. You're baptized. You are, in, in a sense, anointed um, um, with the blood of Christ and baptism with the Lord's Supper through the life of the Church. You're covered with Christ, and you're de you're declared righteous for the sake of Christ. And you have your moments of doubt and weakness. Uh, we all do. Still Christian, still saved. So is this is Saul unfolds, and it's going to be it's going to become quite tragic. You know, it, it, first of all, we have to remember that Saul is a sinner like everybody else, and that's going to become evident once again. Well, it, I think it does here too, as he hides in the luggage. And so do you. You take vows. I take vows. We get scared. We're weak. Um, and you know, I, I myself pray for. I mean, I have the gift of the Holy Spirit, as do you, dear Christian. But you know, so I, there's nothing wrong with praying for more spirits. I preach and go out in the community, stuff like that, that the Lord would would you know, give me His Spirit. I may boldly proclaim his word. Uh, uh, it's because you know, fail at times. Uh, um, we all do. So look at your own life and realize that, yes, even in your weakness, in your moments of doubt, in your moments of being silent and questioning God, and you're still saved. You know, so we'll, we'll see some things indicating that even in Saul's moments of great failure. You know, and again, you have to think how oh, this happens so quickly. I mean, this is going to sound rather crisp. What a head trip, right? You know, just how could he wrap his mind around that? Even as he begins to prophesy, he gets the Spirit. Uh, and we've talked about that elsewhere, so we won't unpack that tonight, the role of the Spirit in the Old Testament, how we lose the Old Testament uh, with the fall in that sense, and not really until Pentecost does it come back and, um, uh, and begin really the restoration of all things in the life of the Christian church. But anyway, uh 
you know, Saul is prophesying, and we don't actually know what he was saying or what he was doing. People hear him. These prophets are considered to be children of Samuel. He is their, he is their father, the prophet Samuel. He is their father. But, you know, what a thing. Um, and now, you know, looking forward to Christ, as I mentioned, too, we do see, as we try to unpack this as theologians, you know, and again, the purpose of Scripture, because he tells us, is uh, because our Lord tells us it's about Christ, so, you know, we can see you know, how this is pointing us forward to Christ. So God gives a king. Now, we ultimately know Jesus is our king. We don't, we don't, we don't need anybody else. And ultimately, we always think we do. I mean, think about the political season we, we, we are in, which is just getting nastier by the day. Oh, my. And, um, and remember, though, no candidate is your savior. Our Lord is our savior. He, you know, we talked about this a couple nights ago. He does things according to his good, gracious will. You know, we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. So when we think about the story of Samuel, you know, that, that he is anointed, he prophesies, Jesus is both the prophet, he's the priest, he's the king, all rolled into one. Um, and the sacrifice, you know, just the, the, he does it all for us. He fulfills it all for us. And so Samuel is... You know, beginning to turn us and pointing for, pointing us forward. Uh, you know, God will be among us again and lead us again through his king. And we're going to hear about David soon, but ultimately our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As this begins to unfold, we're going to be reminded of Abraham, but David's going to receive these powerful prophecies about his heir that will be on the throne forever. Not that he will have an heir on the throne forever, but a particular heir will be on the throne forever. And of course, Christ our Lord. So Samuel, um, in this episode with Saul, is turning us and beginning to you know, point us forward to say, okay, what's God going to do? When, when he gathers the people together, he takes them on the carpet. He says, you know, you have God. What else do you need? You, you and I can heed those words, particularly in a political, political season like this. Um, and he, you know, he says, okay, but you want a king. All right, I'll give you a king. You know, we'll see how that goes for you. And it isn't actually going to go. Even with David, it's not going to go all that well. Um, and then certainly with David heirs, it, David's heirs, it falls apart. So, it, you know, so Samuel anoints him. And this is you know, just a couple, you know, within, you know, 48 hours of, of them coming together. And we hear how when, when Samuel meets a family member or Saul, Saul, the now anointed king meets a family member. He doesn't. He doesn't want to tell me. I was, you know, okay. Don I went looking for the donkeys, but I'm not going to tell you what else happened. We, we were told that in the text. I, you know, because first of all, as we hear at the end of this, you know, there's people already grumbling. We, you know, well, he anointed me king. And one day you're 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 Saul. The next day you're Saul the king. Um, and we hear about him being changed too. Well, that happens to us as Christians, doesn't it? Sometimes very quickly, uh, and even if it happens sort of quickly, we begin to look about look at look at things differently. I think the change goes on as we're conformed to the image of Christ throughout our life. Uh, we 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 see things through the lens of Christ um, and His Church, through the lens of Scripture, His Word, more and more clearly as life goes by. Um, uh, we uh, we get wiser in the sense the more we, we learn about God and the more we spend our life in the church hearing about God and receiving his gift and give, giving, we, we use that voice, which is his word echoed, you know, respoken through us, confessed through us, just the same saying the word confession to those around us, to the community around us. Um, and we are changed. You know, I mentioned this night, last night or the night before last night, we were at church um, doing this. Uh, the cafeteria, but you know, you're not you, when you're ordained. I, you know, I mentioned, I did think it was last night I mentioned this because um, we were talking about James, and you you are called to a different way of uh, life. Not not that I'm not the same person, and stuff like that, but the way you look at things, the way you think about things, and that, that affects your relationships with people around you. Uh, I, I put a a saying on, and these things come up every every year or two like that. I, I don't know who writes them. They're usually fairly clever, but it was about the life of a pastor, how lonely it can be. 
And people did reach out to me and they were concerned, you know, you're doing okay, yeah, I'm fine. But I want people to be aware of, you know, the life, it's a big change for a, when you become a pastor and really a Christian too. And again, as you begin to, to grow in the faith and learn and, and, and find your footing, you become a different person. People recognize it about you. Uh, some people rejoice in that. Other people are, you know, like to have you around because you are usually fairly joyful. Um, you think you think about things in sort of a big way, and we know the end of the story, no matter what happens to us in this life, and it's a really good ending, you know, the, the resurrection of, of our flesh, and the restoration of all things, and being with God in a true way forever as people that we were created to be without the stain of sin, all, all the wonderful things that we hear about um, and are promised. Uh, but in this life, you know, it, it can be tough. Uh, my brothers and I, you know, we are often moved far away from our families. We're called far away from our, our families, and uh, you might try to get back there a little bit closer, but you know, it's usually still hours and hours away. Uh, so your kids grow up and don't get to see their cousins and things like that, and all the big holidays like many people do. Um, and often they don't know their cousins well for that reason. You know, technology does help with that. Uh, um, and this is not a knock to the congregation. I'm very blessed, um, and you don't get into this for the money, uh, but... You know, you see other people around you with wealth and usually very generous in the church, stuff like that, and that's fine. But you go without a lot of things. Um, I'm very blessed as a pastor. Um, uh, uh, but again, you know, um, again, if you're in it for the money, you're you're doing the wrong thing. So anyway, the point of that, I mean, was you become a different person. You think about things differently. You speak differently about things. And you take your lumps for it. Your old, long-term friendships sort of evaporate. Uh, not all of them. I know I've met up with a few, even some very close friends over the years, um, old high school friends and stuff like that. And I moved away right when I was done in high school, 17 when I left home and never really looked back. Uh, and you know, so that, that you know, changed things too. And I became a different person in the standpoint. I grew up very quickly because I was in the military. But anyway, the point of this is not, you know, who cares about my own personal history is that I remember meeting with some of those High school friends, um, maybe I haven't seen them in a while, and we were just, and some of them were very close, you know, just nothing in common with them. And that was kind of it, you know, it was sort of a, we didn't say the words, but we kind of knew as we parted company that that was kind of going to be it for a friendship, because my way of looking about things and speaking about things was different. Um, you know, some of that's maturity and stuff like that, but, you know, the way you think about things as a Christian, not just the pastor, but as a Christian, so you too. It's just interesting in this text that, that, Saul has changed. Um, uh, and, and it's not always going to be good for him. In fact, he's going to struggle with that. But so do you. You're called to a way as a Christian. You're placed on that way by your baptism. That's the ancient language for the Christian church is the way, followers of the way. You know, it's, it's a way of existing, of being. And not so much like a follow the yellow brick road, but how we exist. And it's different. It's a real blessing to those around you, but they may not see that, and they may reject you uh, for that blessing. So I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing that sort of popped out of the text. So let's stop there. Uh, as Saul is uh, anointed, forgive me for my mixing up of the names uh, if I did that, uh, but go and read chapter 10 of First Samuel again, and hopefully it'll be a little clearer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the preaching of the Holy Cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the spread of his knowledge throughout the entire world. We pray for those who are persecuted and oppressed for your name's sake. And as always, we pray for the sick and the dying. For Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Elena, Joanne, Betty, Pam, Donna, Robert, Joy, Tyler, Amber, Joe, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, Liberty, Don, Lori, Chris, John, Dylan, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Heather, Jeff, Christy, Brad, Clint, Marlis, Luke, Aaron, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Jason, Camden, Ashley, Scott, Allison, Allie, Fern, Don, Amy, Paul, Jeremy, Betty, Jenny, Grant, Joan, Anita, Dave, Bob, Al, Aaron, M, Susan, Stephanie, and all who are crying out to you. Heavenly Father, we ask you, according to your good and gracious will, that you would place your healing hand upon them. We ask you to bless uh, the travels of those uh, who are uh, um, still on their way here to enjoy a wonderful weekend of exercise and, and uh, just fun with our brothers and sisters in our community. We ask you to guide their steps and allow them to reach their destination safely. We ask you to bless our Vacation Bible School, which will begin on Monday. Um, and pray that uh, if I, as the final preparations are made, that those would go smoothly. We give you thanks uh, for those that have volunteered uh, their time uh, to get things ready and will be teaching and, uh, and doing all the other various activities. And pray that, again, you bless all of us this coming week and the children who will, who will learn more uh, about the Ten Commandments and you. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Bring your hands and commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me. The evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing a very simple hymn tonight, uh, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He has washed away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Well, with that, my brothers and sisters, I pray you have a blessed evening. Forget, I'm a little distracted tonight. Don't know why. Um. Uh. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Tomorrow, new day. Uh, blessed rest to you again, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.